Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this uh, video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about uh, magnetic circuit of the synchronous alternator. In case of uh, synchronous alternator, we know that uh, we require a field which generates enough amount of magnetomotive force to maintain the flux and flux density throughout the magnetic circuit. So, to estimate uh, our uh, magnetomotive force requirement of the field, we require to calculate uh, different uh, magnetic circuit and uh, magnetomotive force required for each individual circuit. So, uh, let us see uh, one figure that indicates our magnetic circuit. In this figure, we have shown a salient pole type of uh, rotor for a pair of pole so this is our one of the pole this is another pole so we have a pole pitch so this is our pole pitch and the stator and rotor is shown in the figure so the whole or entire magnetic circuit we can see in this uh, figure in stator we have slots here we can see the slots and we have teeth so stator core so depth of the stator core can be seen here so it is stator, we have rotor pole, rotor, rotor shaft, uh, salient pole, so we have a height of the pole, this is pole pitch and half of the pole pitch we can uh, consider for calculation of the length of the yoke and same way to calculate the length of the core we take a pole pitch and half of the pole pitch. So flux of the path can be seen. So based on this uh, figure or based on this cross section for a salient pole type of a machine for a pair of pole, we can further proceed to estimate uh, our uh, requirement of the magnetomotive force for the individual magnetic circuit. In the figure, we, can, we have seen that Ds that is known as the depth of the slot, Dc that is depth of the core. We have D and suffix S or C, S for slot, C for core. Then we have LG, that is air gap length between stator and rotor. HPL, that is overall height of the pole. L, that is length of the yoke. And DY, Y suffix is for yoke. So depth of the yoke. So this much of uh, notations are very useful while calculating uh, magnetomotive force for each and individual uh, magnetic circuit. So let us see a total field or total magnetomotive force required from the field at no load. That can be divided into several parts as per the individual magnetic circuit. So magnetomotive for, uh, force for the air gap that is uh, ATG. Then we have magnetomotive force for the armature teeth, that is ATT. We have magnetomotive force for the core, so ATC. Magnetomotive force for the pole, that is ATP. And magnetomotive force for the yoke, that is ATY. So total magnetic circuit is divided into five parts. One part that is air gap, another part is armature teeth, another part is core then pole and then yoke. So if we calculate the uh, individual requirement of the each magnetomotive force for each magnetic circuit, then total magnetomotive force from the field that is ATFO at no load, that is a addition of all the individual magnetomotive force requirement. So that can be a summation of uh, ATG, that is a uh, air gap uh, for and that is magnetomotive force for the air gap then ATT plus ATC plus ATP and plus ATY. So this addition can be a total magnetomotive force to be generated from the field. So now in uh, next step we will consider each individual requirement of the magnetomotive force. So we start with the magnetomotive force for the air gap. So that is ATG and the equation to calculate uh, ampere turns for the gap is very well known. 
so it is a uh, 8 uh, multiplied by 10 raised to 5 multiplied by bg multiplied by lg and multiplied by kg where bg that is a uh, gap flux density kg it is known as a gap contraction factor and lg that is air gap length then we have to calculate magnetomotive force for the armature teeth we have to calculate flux density at one third height from the narrow end in case of armature teeth we know that we use a parallel sided slots and therefore our teeth are tapered teeth and in case of tapered teeth we know that flux density never remains uniform uh, throughout the teeth uh, length. So to calculate average flux density we take uh, flux density at one third height from the narrow end. So to calculate flux density at one third height from the narrow end we have, uh, we have used this equation that is flux 5 and divided by psi that is the ratio of, of pole arc to pole pitch and the number of slots per pole multiplied by lt that is the length and multiplied by width that is wt at one third so wt one third that is the width of the tooth at one third height from the narrow end so once we calculate a required flux density then from the standard B at curve, B that is flux density and AT, AT is a ampere tons per meter that is known as standard B at curve. So based on a required flux density from the standard graph of B at, we can calculate ampere tons per meter. So let the value of ampere tons corresponding to BT one third B at, that is a ATT. T for suffix T is for the teeth. So total magnetomotive force required for the armature teeth that is capital ATT that is equal to ATT multiplied by DS where DS is a depth of the slot and we know that uh, length of the teeth can be it is exactly equal to the depth of the slot. So this way we can uh, calculate or we can rather estimate our requirement of the ampere tons for the teeth. Then we have a magnetomotive force for the core. Let the value of ampere tons corresponding to BC, BC is a flux density of the core, be ATC, C, a small AT. So from the B at graph, we can uh, find the value of ATC. And therefore, the total requirement of the magnetomotive force for the core, that is capital ATC, is equal to ATC multiplied by LC. Where LC, that is the length of the core and the length of the flux path in the core is taken equal to one half of the pole pitch on the mean diameter. So, the length of the core now it can be defined as per equation that is a pi and multiplied by d pi and d d is a stator bore diameter and plus certain addition that is a two times a ds ds is a depth of the slot plus dc and dc is a depth of the core and divided by p p is a number of poles but we have taken over half of the pole pitch so it is uh, uh, divided by 2 times P. Next that is a magnetomotive force calculation for the pole. Top two third length of the pole carries a useful flux and the leakage flux between pole shoes. Bottom one third length of the pole carries a useful flux and the leakage flux between pole shoes and pole bodies. And therefore flux at uh, top of the pole is a minimum and in bottom it is maximum so accordingly our flux density uh, will uh, change and uh, magnetomotive force per meter corresponding to BP maximum that is the flux density of the pole maximum and BP minimum will be ATP that is a maximum 
and ATP minimum respectively. And therefore total magnetomotive force for the pole body we have an equation that is ATP that is a magnetomotive force for the pole and that is a ATP maximum multiplied by one third height of the pole HPL plus ATP minimum multiplied by two third height of the pole. So we have divided our entire length of the pole into two parts. One is one third height of the pole and another is two third height of the pole. And uh, with that length, we have uh, multiplied uh, ampere tons per meter, each ampere tons per meter and ampere tons uh, per meter that is maximum and minimum. And that again depends on the flux density, either it is maximum or minimum. And we have discussed that a maximum that is uh, at the bottom, that is uh, uh, the bottom one third part and we have minimum at the top uh, length of the pole. And that is uh, our top two-third uh, height of the pole. So from this equation we can easily able to calculate the magnetomotive force for the pole. So our next uh, calculation that is magnetomotive force for the yoke. Uh, flux in the yoke, we, first we calculate uh, flux in the yoke. So flux in the yoke that is flux phi and the suffix y that is a half of the total flux that is a one half and flux phi plus that is our useful flux then flux phi sl that is a leakage flux uh, between all shoes and then we have phi pl that is a leakage flux between all bodies so this way we have total flux useful plus leakage flux and we take uh, half of the value of the total flux uh, through the yoke. Now we calculate area of the yoke. So area of the yoke Ay that is a length of the yoke multiplied by depth of the yoke and that is L that is length of the yoke multiplied by dy. So dy is the depth of the yoke. Now we calculate flux density in the yoke and uh, for flux density by we know that it is a flux divided by area. So flux phi y divided by a y that is area of the yoke and if we substitute uh, values then we have an equation that uh, we can easily able to calculate flux density in the yoke. Once we have flux density available then magnetomotive force per meter ATY corresponding to flux density by can be easily able to be uh, calculated from the standard graphical values. So total magnetomotive force for the yoke ATY that is equal to ATY multiplied by LY and LY so uh, that is length of the yoke and LY can be given as uh, path of the magnetic flux through the yoke which is taken one half of the pole pitch on the mean diameter of the yoke. And it can be indicated in the equation form that is Ly pi dr. So dr is a rotor diameter and we have to subtract the certain values that is uh, 2 times HPL minus uh, dy that is depth of the yoke and it is divided by 2p. p is the number of poles. So this way we can easily able to calculate the total magnetomotive force and total magnetomotive force required at the no load from the field that can be given by the summation of each individual ampere tons requirement. So ATFO that is magnetomotive force for, for the field at no load that can be given as a summation of each individual magnetomotive force requirement for the different magnetic circuit and uh, that is uh, given by ATG that is a uh, ampere tons required for the gap plus ATT ampere tons requirement for the armature teeth plus ATC ampere tons requirement for the core plus ATP ampere tons requirement for the pole and at last we have ATY that is ampere tons requirement for the yoke. So this way we can easily able to calculate uh, magnetomotive force requirement uh, from the field at no load 
and uh, for the calculation we know that how to calculate uh, full load fill mmf so i must stop here and uh, thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much